Hi, everybody, and thank you for being here for Deborah Cobalt Live. Joining me currently is Avi Slavin. He is the founder of The Boardroom, a barbershop, which is currently in a co-sharing workspace in Los Angeles. He started his first one at the WeWorks down in uh, Silicon Valley area. And uh, he's also a former online media consultant serving uh, large brand agencies. Avi, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Deborah. Yeah, I'm excited to have you because I was talking to someone or lots of friends how the entire workspace nowadays, especially if you're in the arts and you're an independent person, has totally changed. You don't really work from home. It's better to sort of collaborate in a workspace. And a lot of people are choosing to go to these workplaces um, just because they meet people and do all that. And you found the real niche, right, which is grooming services. Brilliant. Tell us about it. Thank you. Well, I started off my career in the online media space, and over the last decade, I've actually leveraged co-sharing spaces for my operation. Mm. They're easy to move into. They don't require a long commitment. And I was sitting uh, in our offices in WeWork in Playa Vista, and I identified a real big window of opportunity. You take a walk down the hallway, and you see office after office, And there was no real retail space except for the common area with the kitchen. This is a community. People spend the majority of their time at work. And my theory was if we bring a micro retail environment to the workspace, would it work? My hunch was that it would. Mm -hmm. And so after going through the ringer of getting this process uh, approved, we finally opened up shop, um, our first boardroom barber shop in the heart of Silicon Beach in Playa Vista, uh, in the WeWork. And we were completely um, surprised with the amount of popularity that the service was offering. Well, and it's not just... Here, you can actually... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what I was saying was a guy could be busy at work. They could walk right across the hallway, get a complete haircut and shave experience, go back to work, all within about you know, a, t- a 10 minute, wa- a 10 second walk. And that's the type of uh, clientele that we were looking to initially um, gather into our, our, our business. And it worked out really well. But not just for men, right? Women also frequent your shop because you offer massages. I think you were saying um, with the Theragun, I was telling you, my son loves the Theragun. I love it. Um, you offer massages and, and other types of services too, right? Absolutely. Look, bottom line, and I've been saying this from day one, we are in the business of putting smiles on people's faces. Mm -hmm. My background also dealt a lot on the hospitality side, servicing people, me by nature. I was the guy that always hosted parties, made sure that people feel good. I may not be a barber myself, but I sure as heck know what it's like to be in that seat. And I said, what would Avi like? What is the ultimate barber experience that he could build master the services and leave clients feeling like a million bucks. And that's kind of the strategy that we took. And because of our unique services, because of all the bells and whistles that we offer, um, our clients come back day in and day out. And we do offer a lot of services outside of typical grooming. Of course, we have the unbelievable haircuts and we have the shaving packages, but we also do, um, you know, women's haircuts as well. We also offer massage services. I think we're the only barbershop that has ever took on a big partnership with Theragun. Theragun are these percussive massage therapy devices. Amazing. Typically, you walk into a barber shop, and the old school technology for the last 60, 70 years was these big clunky metal massagers that destroyed the barber's hands and offered a <laughs> mediocre at best experience. The way that we finish every service with our clients is with two custom branded Theraguns that we use on our clients' necks, on their shoulders, on their back. And that's the ultimate way to leave an experience, right? So we offer that as part of our hair services, and we also offer that as a standalone package. Absolutely fantastic. And you just opened your second boardroom, correct, over at the Pacific Design Center in West Hollywood, which is this extraordinary space. Um, Very creative people in and out of there. It's incredible. Um, How's that one doing? That's just phenomenal. That's amazing. We did our soft launch on November 8th. Uh, with a huge grand opening party. We had an official ribbon cutting. We had the mayor of Hollywood come. Um, sorry, the, we- the mayor of West Hollywood come. He was actually a client. He was serviced. 
And that generated a lot of buzz. We had a lot of media. We had a lot of influencers. We had the entire WeWork community. We had a DJ. And it was a really amazing way to kind of open up our second location, introducing ourselves into the West Hollywood community, which is a fantastic community. We've been trying to identify the right location for quite a bit of time since we came up with this idea. And, and then the, uh, the availability of a Pacific Design Center location came to be. And, you know, we're here to stay in that area. And business is good. Business is real good. Well, Again, we I- just opened up. Sorry? Well, go ahead. Well, you, you paused, so I just jumped in. What I like is that um, you said to me, you know, it used to be that uh, very often you would go do your business on the golf course. Well, now you can just go to the shop and you can get some grooming services. And it's also a nice, different and fun way. People can have a drink as well, correct? Um, to, to do business. It's not just a matter of getting your hair cut or getting groomed. It's also a place to, to, to do work, right? That's exactly the point. We have the privacy that is needed to cater to executives. And the whole concept is, yeah, golf courses are cool. Conference rooms are cool. But why not have your next board meeting at the boardroom? We can block the entire time of our barbers. We can ultimately make this barbershop your own private experience. We have a large 70-inch TV with full AV capabilities. Imagine doing a uh, you know, they used to have these things called lunch and learns that is, you know, very popular around the media industry. Why don't we do a shave and learn where your clients or your partners are getting a full haircut and shave experience. And while they're getting this done, you're giving them a presentation. Again, it's all about looking good, feeling good. Probably the odds are that those deals are going to close a lot higher. <laughs> and again, I want to be really clear. It's not just for the guys, because unless the women need a shave, I don't know. But um, it's also for the women. You know, they can also go do uh, their business if they just want to get some grooming. I, and I think I mentioned on the phone, it would be great to get some manicuring uh, services there. It doesn't have to be everything with tips, but just something simple where you could maybe go and, and be relaxed and, and have a business meeting as well. I mean, I like the whole idea. Tell me a little bit about the changing workspace. I mean, you, you've you worked in um, in media for, for years. I mean, it's very different, right? Um, where it's open spaces, more collaborative, where you get to talk to different people. I was working on Wall Street in New York City when I was living there, which is where I'm from. I was working on, you know, big Fifth Avenue, traditional corporate complexes. And I think that... You know, these, uh, these environments are, are boring. It's dull, and there needed to be a change. I, I think that the entire coach-sharing space really rejuvenated the whole office environment altogether. Yeah, well, you can even People... speak. <laughs> you can speak, which is nice. <laughs> well, it's true. Listen, people used to dread coming to work, and probably a lot had to do with the environment that you're in. If you're in a collaborative community-like environment where you have all the resources, all the conveniences available at your fingertips, again, this is the place where you spend the majority of your time. That's right. Um, And then, of course, the networking opportunity. I could tell you, when when I was running my media business, I cannot tell you how many new clients I was able to uh, take on just by networking within the space. Wow. It is a goldmine of, you know, equal and like-minded people that do the same thing. And the connections are absolutely amazing when it comes to that. And that is what the co-sharing space is all about. It's not just coming into work and having free coffee. It's about the whole community aspect of it. And I think that it was really revitalized over the last decade. There's so many that have popped up. There are co-working spaces for women only. There are co-working spaces only for artists and 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 whatnot. Um, I think it's fan- a fantastic thing. And for someone like you who's bringing services, all the better. Um, where else do you see this going? Because I know many of them have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and good meals, too, that you can have. What else do you think that would be uh, very valuable in a co-working space for people that you'd like to bring? Well, again, if you think about a community right? Um, Any community, you have a police department, you have a fire department. Obviously, these things are not going to be part of it. But what else do you have that are daily conveniences, right? You have your coffee shop. Um, Some of these co-sharing spaces actually have some pretty good coffee. But what if you wanted an uplift, a little micro coffee cafe with an actual barista might save a person that trip to the Starbucks in the morning because they have it in-house. And you're more productive. dry cleaning services? Right? And you're more productive. 
You're just more productive because it's right there. That's what it's all about. It's about convenience. If you don't have to leave your community and you could take everything in-house, it makes for a more valuable worker and it creates a more valuable environment for the long run. A friend of mine is a trainer and he's working with a studio uh, currently that they, they hired him to do a complete wellness program for people and literally everyone I think he's got 90 people that he's working with they all signed up and it's the food it's the wellness program and it's it's offered to these people for free and they're coming into work happily they're coming early they're more productive so you do that you are able to get your hair cut as and in your case it's an, it's an extraordinary experience it's relaxing and it's just as you said what would Avi want um, so I love the fact that that so much of the workspaces have changed and you're such a big part of that. Um, well, look, the whole idea, Deborah, is if you could anticipate the client's needs even before they even know it's a need, then the odds are you'll have a success full business. You know, that's exactly what happened. Right. I wasn't necessarily looking to open up a barbershop. If you asked me two years ago, if I would be owning a chain of barbershops with a big expansion plan, I would think that they're crazy. Right. I happened to be sitting there as just a regular tenant like everybody else. And I said, you know what? What if we bring this in-house? Would I go? And I started asking other people, would they go? And I think that's the secret to this new co-working space. You know, you asked a question before, what other types of services? And it's really asking that question, what are the needs of the client? And if there's a big enough demand for it, It'll come. You could figure out a way how to bring that in house and have a sustainable business for the long term. Also, um, I love the fact you are you have also uh, started the Heal Your Soul Foundation, and this all does tie together because I believe that you were grooming your father in law, your um, uh, your wife's dad, right when he was ill. And tell me about that. Yeah. So um, backtrack. A few years ago, we had a big wedding planned in Montauk at the end of Long Island in New York. And a few months before the wedding, my father-in-law was diagnosed with ALS. Oh. Um, it was really an unfortunate news for the entire family. And we ultimately ended up moving the wedding to L.A. And after the wedding um, was really when the decline started happening to his health. And, you know, as the months went on, um, he was bedridden and he really couldn't get out of bed. And again, I'm not a barber, but I know how to cut hair pretty well. And I used to do it to myself and I know how to shave. And I had this big, you know, passion for straight razor shaving. And I used to come over and every Sunday was grooming day. And my wife and I would kind of get all the tools together. My wife would hold the shaving bowl with the hot water and we would use the shaving soaps with the brushes. That is so and loving. Yeah. I would come and we would give him haircuts and, and shaves every Sunday. And it was an incredible experience. And, you know, he ended up passing away um, exactly one week after our daughter was born. Hmm. And about a year later is when the barbershop came to life. And it was only then that, you know, a spark um, entered me. And I was thinking about these times because, look, my, my father-in-law was ultimately a really good friend to me. He wasn't just a father-in-law. And some of my best memories that I had with him was during these grooming moments. And, you know, I put one and two together and I realized the, the effects of grooming. When, when one looks good, they feel good. And there's a magical energy that you could do with that. And, you know, I, I, I quickly called one of my barbers and I said, hey, um, would you mind being a part of, you know, a movement if, if this actually came into fruition to actually go out there and, you know, do cuts to people that can't get out of bed, cancer patients, ALS patients, people with paralysis, people with illnesses. And, you know, the, the overwhelming response was tremendous. And I spoke to my wife and, you know, to honor my father-in-law, but to also create a huge magical movement across the globe. Uh, one of our missions and our purposes behind this whole thing is this Heal Your Soul Foundation. And, and the Heal Your Soul Foundation, in simple, is connecting barbers and stylists around the globe. It is agnostic to our barbershop. We could have a whole network of barbershops and salons from around the world that participate. 
And it's matching them with people that need these grooming services. That's and beautiful. I think that there's a huge um, amount of magic, and I think there's a huge amount of purpose that we could do from this. So we started the foundation, and the idea is to raise money from private individuals, from corporate sponsorships, to provide this infrastructure for this barber-patient matching. And we're really, really excited about that. Absolutely wonderful. Boy, I tell you, you are an entrepreneur through and through, philanthropic and all. So um, the boardroom barbershop, how many more do you anticipate uh, opening? You've got your first two that are very successful here in the Los Angeles area. Where else are you thinking? Well, yeah, I mean, I think the L.A. market is not complete. Uh, already we're identifying spaces in the Arts District in downtown, in Orange County, in San Diego. We're looking at Las Vegas. And, of course, I have to go back to my roots. There will be definitely a few boardrooms opening up in New York. Um, we anticipate over the next five years um, hundreds of these around the globe. This is a big idea this is a big expansion we have some unbelievable partners behind this and we want to create a global impact not just from a revenue standpoint but also with this purpose standpoint so yeah. well, i love it, it. It's, it's a big dream and you know you have to start with one and then two and slowly we're going to build the infrastructure to scale to where we want to be yeah changing the face of open workspaces i love it avi slavin thank you so much and people uh, for those of you in california please visit uh, the boardroom i'm personally you invited me there for my massage and a little bit of a haircut because believe me i need a trim so i'm going to take you up on that um i'm not sure which one i'll go to it lives somewhere in between uh but they are beautiful i know the one in playa vista is always sold out so you got to get your uh get your appointment and i know the pacific design center is soon selling out so um thank you thank you so much for all you do and um i appreciate it and um any parting words you'd like to tell people how they can get in touch with you on social media yeah, so it's at Boardroom, and Boardroom is spelled B-O-R-D-R-O-O-M. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same thing with our website. It's theboardroom.com. Board mm -hmm. is spelled B-O-R-D. We also have an app on the Apple App Store called Boardroom. Um, we probably have the easiest booking system on the planet, and we look forward to seeing you at our locations. Thank you so much, Avi, for all you do, and... Um, also with Heal the Soul Foundation. I love that. Um, everybody, um, you can see our show uh, on Facebook and on YouTube and we, because we're streaming live right now. And also later you can hear our podcast on Apple Podcasts, on the iHeartRadio app, um, Spreaker, just about anywhere, Spotify, where you uh, watch and listen to your shows, to your podcasts, you'll find us. So that's Deborah Cobalt Live, and we thank Avi uh, Slavin. Slavin, my God, I'm saying your name wrong, um, from The Boardroom for joining us. It's been a great show, and I appreciate it. Please check out The Boardroom, and um, we'll see you next time.